Hello guys, Lawrence Wayne here. Sorry for the lack of videos, I've been busy with exams. Uh, so the last video I recorded was something regarding my uh, Japanese study setup, and very soon after that I started work on this project here, Spark Reader, which is essentially an all-in-one solution that does everything the other programs did, because that was quite the big mess. I might delete that old video because it's completely irrelevant now. Um, so yes, this project is huge, uh, probably the single biggest project I've ever done. And um, so let's start it up, apparently it's still running, oh, let's just restart it. Um, so it just uh, starts up pretty quick, and once it does, well it's going to minimize, because of a setting I've set, and it looks like this. So it's a little window, very compact. And if I copy some Japanese text to it, so I have here some Japanese text. When I copy that to my clipboard, it's pretty much instantaneous and it uh, figures out where the spaces are and all that. So there's quite a large amount of components to this. There's three main parts on the behind the scenes and there's the two main high level parts. So the three lower parts are the text splitter, which will figure out where spaces are. So the spaces are represented in this program by little bars here. That's where it thinks the spaces are. You can manually correct them with the middle mouse button to add your own spaces. And I'll get to why that's important later. Uh, there's also the deconjugator. And what they'll do is deconjugate words. So this over here is, for example, the conjugated, the te form conjugation of miyageru. If you don't know any Japanese, you probably don't know what that is. But uh, this, all this code here handles the conjugation, and that's probably the hardest part of the program to understand if you know, know Japanese. This is the uh, breakdown of the classes that simply represent the conjugation rules in the language. Uh, fairly complex stuff here. Uh, essentially has a whole list of every grammatical or conjugation rule in the language. Uh, and finally is the dictionary system. So when you click on one of these words, you get the definition. And these definitions are held in RAM, so that progress bar you saw at the start was it loading the entire Japanese language into RAM, basically. And because modern computers have quite a bit of RAM, it's uh, feasible and it doesn't even take that long. Uh, there's two dictionaries loaded right now. It's Edict and Epwing an Epwing dictionary, because Epwing is just a format, I forgot what this one's called. Um, Epwing tends to have example sentences as well. So, um, and these are rated by how relevant they are. So some of these will have more than one definition. Oh, this one has eight. So you can scroll through them with the mouse wheel over the word. And if the definition is too long to fit on screen, you can scroll through them by having your mouse over the definition text. You can look up these examples in uh, Spark Reader as well. So the main front-end stuff is obviously the UI. This is completely custom UI stuff and the settings thing because this is a publicly released program. It has to be configurable to whatever the user might want. So I built this very complicated settings page where you can change pretty much every detail of how the program works. Uh, and this is a custom dictionary. The editor doesn't really work yet, but in theory, you'll be able to edit, add and remove uh, custom words that aren't in the dictionary, like characters names specific to whatever you're reading. So that's it for, I guess, the roundabouts of how this thing is put together. So with all these tools, you have everything you need to understand a Japanese sentence. So if I want to say read whatever this is, this is the title of the novel I've been reading. It's, uh, I can see this miyagete, which is te form. Uh, we'll look into what that is later. It means to look up, look up at something. Goran is applied to the te form of a verb. This is the te form of a verb, so that's good. Then it means try to, or please try to. We can have some examples of what that is. Just try it on, try it again, try giving it some thoughts. Those kind of sentences you'd use that word in. Nozona is night sky, no is the possessive, uh, you'd know this because this is just grammar, so not really much point in looking this up. Hoshi is star, and wo is an object marker. 
So in English, we know that this basically means please try to look up at the stars of the night sky. So the sentence is basically read backwards. And this, this part over here should actually be on the left here. Um, and of course, because you can now see all the different words and all the parts of it, you can understand the underlying Japanese. Whereas if you just took this whole line and plonked it into Google Translate, um, well, it's more or less correct, I guess. It's it's missing the Goran, the uh, try to. Uh, Google Translate seems to have just thrown that out. I wonder what happens if you take it out of the sentence. Uh, basically nothing. So, yeah, Google Translate doesn't seem to think that's important, but actually, in the title, it's the most important part because the story is about a guy who used to stargaze with his friends and then he stopped, and then it's the story about him going back to uh, stargazing again. So this is kind of the more important part of the sentence that Google Translate decides is completely irrelevant. Um, but anyway, besides the point of Google Translate being pretty terrible, especially if you're trying to read an entire novel. This is much better if you're trying to learn the language. Um, so you can also then add these as flashcards. So if you for some reason don't know what this word is, you can add it and you can maybe write the translation here. Blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna write the whole thing. And you can then import these into Anki or your whatever your flashcard program you use, as long as you can import via CSV. You can also export the entire line if you wanna have the entire sentence. Uh, because this exports the selected definition, uh, includes the example sentence as like an example and all sorts of other details. And yeah, you can have a log of previously processed sentences by scrolling on this bar. And you know, there's all sorts of features. There's multiplayer as well. So if you have friends, you can have them read along with you. And this thing will tell you how far behind you and your friend are assuming you're reading the same thing. Um, so you can over voice chat or talk about the lines instead of constantly asking what line they're on if they've moved ahead or not. Of course, we can see this in practice on an actual game. So if we're gonna stop, um, so this essentially just does the copying pasting for me. So this loads the text from the game and puts it into the clipboard, which then goes into here. This was the same thing I used to use to. Um, as one part of the many in my previous translation software, but now all the options on this are disabled, except for the ones that are uh, just copy the text of the clipboard. As you can see, the text just basically goes up here, and we can then look up the words. Um, okay, so here's an example of what that manual split thing is for. Here we have a word that's incorrectly been split by the auto splitter. So if we minimize this, we can see that there's no split here. Um, now, I just happen to know that this is supposed to be split here, so I can just middle click or right click, left click to say that there should be a space here because um, basically any and all software that exists that attempts to split Japanese text will be wrong because it doesn't understand the context of the sentence. Humans are a bit lazy, so we don't always do it, but there's a few cases where it'll fail. So if we just have the human correct the computer, then the computer can figure out the rest for you. So if you middle click somewhere, then it will see, okay, there's supposed to be a space here and then it recomputes everything else, knowing that there must be a space here and whatever it outputs. So it's still 100% correct because it's assisted by a human and it's still assisting the human. So it's a nice compromise. Um, whereas other solutions will try to automate everything, and if there's something wrong, well, too bad, you can't really tell it what's wrong. And you're left with that incorrectly parsed sentence. So, yeah. Um, obviously, this is again about stargazing, so there's going to be some stuff on this. Okay, here's an interesting sentence with lots of words in it. If it's too long to fit in the line, you can either have it fit on more than one line, or... You can make it scroll like this so it stays nice and compact. Because, as you can tell, my previous setup took up two screens. This, okay, it's gone on to the next one. Um, but this all only takes up one. Um, the text at the top here, this light blue text, which might be hard to see in the video, is called Furigana, which essentially tells you how do I read this text. And if you 
Uh, if you don't know the word, known words are in blue by the way, I kind of forgot to mention that. If you don't know the word, then in Japanese you don't know how to pronounce it either. Um, which is sort of a problem if you're trying to read, it's nice to know what it sounds like. So, I've set it up so you can mouse over words to see how they are read. And words you know how to read, it'll hide this information from you. So this word is cookie, for instance. Uh, I was supposed to know that, just double check so I don't look stupid on video. Um, but if I didn't know that, I could mark it as I don't know this word, and then it'll tell me this information when I mouse over. You can also, in the settings, um, on Furigana, set it to always visible for all cases, and then you do that. Then you can see the text for everything, and you can also see in dictionary form if you want, or only for the kanji. Um, I'm just going to keep it like this. And uh, this is the deconjugator working, so it takes a bit of text that it's trying to pass, and it'll figure out what conjugations have been applied to it. So, uh, I'm not going to read this whole novel, this is just an example. Um, this is tekuru and past form on the same word, so you can apply more than one conjugation on each other. I have an example sentence here which has quite the conjugation. Uh, this is from a song, so there's already some spaces here, which obviously the text splitter really loves spaces because then it doesn't have to work out where spaces are. And then there's this word, which is the passive completely past polite form of nagasu. So nagasare chaimashita is the full word and it's actually conjugated or joined onto this word to drown. Um, so I'm not going to try and figure out what the exact English equivalent of that is. Right now it's not the point of this video, let's see what Google Translate tells me. I was thrown away. Okay. And this whole sentence. Why was it... Ch <laughs> okay, so Google Translate's nonsense aside. Um, Basically, there's a lot going on here in the conjugation, and this thing will figure out what those conjugations are. And then you can look them up in different dictionaries, and you can see the examples of the word, and you can see how those examples worked. And, uh, yeah. One more thing, uh, the dictionary does some sorting as well on the most relevant words. So there's more than one definition. Uh, let's see if we can find one more definitions here. There's a bunch of definitions for this word. It'll try and figure out which one's most relevant and put them at the top. If this is incorrect, uh, sometimes some words have more than one definition. One is more common than the other, and you can right-click and set it as default, which puts it right at the front. Uh, but this is the normal definition. This all persists, as does the uh, known words. So, for example, I knew that this is uh, puppy, calling it. I've imported basically the, my uh, flashcard deck, which you can do through here. Um, that basically imports which words you know, and obviously you can export words so you can learn them. So yeah, all sorts of useful tools and stuff built into this. Uh, it's still under development, and it's basically attempts to be an all-in-one solution with every feature I could possibly need um, to learn a language or to read in that language. Maybe if you want to contribute to development, if you're interested, I'll leave the GitHub link in the description. More stuff coming up, lots of other projects I'm busy working on, and uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, bye.